What's going on all you mentees? It's been a minute, but here we finally are with the comprehensive reading order of Superman in Collected Editions Part 2. Let's get this going. And welcome back. It has been a minute. Uh, we had a move, we had to box things up, we had to unbox things, and it's really one of the biggest reasons why I couldn't do this video was because I couldn't find my Superman books. But here we finally are. Part two of the comprehensive reading order of Superman in collected editions. Uh, so today we're going to be discussing everything from 1993 to 2001. Again, focusing on the big series. Nothing really like spin-off series or mini-series unless they're crucial. And I am going to talk about some. Um, before going any further though, thank you so much to our existing patrons for voting for this. Uh, every month or so, <laughs> I put up a poll on our Patreon uh, for people to vote for the next reading order, and the link is in the description of the video. And if you want written documentation, that's where you will find the written documentation of all these reading order videos, as well as the past months that I've done. So, we got a lot to talk about, even though it doesn't look like much, but it's Superman. We got a lot to talk about, and let's go ahead and get started with Superman. Let's do Superman for all seasons. Before I start, I want to give a huge thank you to all you wonderful folks that commented on my part one video uh, because you let me know about this collection. This is Superman, The Power Within. So this is Uncle Roger's two pages that I was talking about uh, that he was doing that has not been collected that I had in my custom uh, Omnis. Well, they have been collected. It's in this particular trade paperback that for some reason snuck under at least my radar so in case you want a complete Superman reading order the best way possible, this one right here, uh, this ha happens after the Man of Steel uh, hardcover volume 4. I hope they end up collecting it in a volume 5, but knowing DC, just in case, I went ahead and got this uh, trade paperback version. But the stories are all in here, so thank you so much to all of you that commented on my last video. I gotta put this in my haul for that my next haul video. All right. We are kicking this part two off with Superman for All Seasons. This is the book by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sell. And it really doesn't retcon a lot of the things that have happened post-Crisis on Infinite Earths. And that's why I wanted to suggest reading it here. Here you have a really a better understanding of Superman, his relation to Smallville and, of course, Metropolis and the people that made him who he is today. And even though this book was, Buke on Kenny Omar already trying to talk pretty one day, uh, even though this book was not written until 1998, um, you know, a few years later, I think this is a really good place to read it. And it's got beautiful artwork here by Tim Sell. I love his uh, chubby Superman, as I like to call him, even though the dude is ripped, obviously. Uh, but this goes through all four seasons, different times of Superman's life during uh, different years, whether he was Clark Kent or Superman. Uh, to me, it's just a really great introduction to the character as well. Superman Bizarro's World. This starts off with the story of Lex Luthor. He's dying, or rather his, uh, his clone body is dying from this degenerative disease. And in an effort to try to save himself, Luther just ends up hatching this plan to recreate Bizarro, a character that was previously introduced during John Byrne's run on Man of Steel. And of course, Bizarro decides to just have his own mission, and that is to recreate the world according to his own vision. And of course, that leads us to the title, Bizarro's World. Now, this is the only way that this has been uh, collected in this old trade paperback. A lot of these are old trade paperbacks, which just goes to show you just how much is lacking in the collected editions department as far as the Man of Steel. Uh, but this is after the return of Superman, after he had died, and it's honestly the next place to go. Now, uh, this one here collects issues all the way from Superman, Action Comics, Adventure, and Man of Steel. So there's still four titles going on, and this is still regarded as the Triangle Years, which I explain in part one of the reading order. These titles, man. The Death of Clark Kent. So th I actually really enjoyed this story. This is about a childhood friend of Clark Kent. His name is uh, Kenny, Kenny Braverman, I think. Um, and he turns out to be a bitter rival of Clark Kent. And 
Somehow he learns the true identity of Superman. Now he's trying to deviate this plan to destroy Superman and get revenge and retribution for something that happened in the past. So he's been holding a grudge for a long time. Um, so this one, again, collected in this old school trade paperback. I need to stop saying that because most of these are. But it's still pretty easy to find out there. Uh, but there's got some great artwork in here by uh, Tom Grumet. Love his art on Superman. I, mainly I became a fan of his because of his run on Teen Titans. Superman Zero Hour. Now we are going to talk about Zero Hour here in a little bit. But this trade paperback uh, collects mainly the Zero Hour issues that tie into Superman. So it's pretty much the story of Extant, who is the villain of Zero Hour. And he's creating these black holes around the DC Universe that are swallowing the universe past, present, and of course future. Now it's up to Superman and friends to stop him. But before they can, each one of the four comics has their own zero issue where it's like a flashback or meeting characters from Superman's past. This one actually just came out a few years ago. It would, like They had never released a collection like this. And for some reason, waited up until, I think, 2018 is when they did it. We also have Superboy in here. It's not just Superman comics, but it's also Steel and Superboy. They are both collected in here. Uh, because they had their own ongoing series for a while. But if you want to see what the big event is, I did an overview of this omnibus years ago. This is the actual Zero Hour event, where you'll have the miniseries, uh, mini where you'll have everything leading up to one of the... Uh, one of the biggest stories uh, re um, revolving around Hal Jordan. Is it important for Superman? Uh, not really, but there are some great Superman moments in here. To me, the best thing to come out of this was they were trying to pretty much set a new rule for time travel. And it brought back the classic JSA that I ended up loving later on. Uh, but this one here, this, this one's still, I think, pretty easy to find. The Trial of Superman. So one important thing, this was released here in America, uh, but I found a cheaper version uh, with Titan Books. They're out of, uh, I think it's they're out of the UK. So the exact same version is available in America. It's just I couldn't find it whenever I bought this, I guess, over 10 years ago. So this pretty much is the story, finding Clark uh, in on trial uh, by a, this mysterious galactic court. Uh, they're known as the Tribunal. And this also features the return of one of Superman's baddest characters. Like, not like bad, like he, the guy sucks, but like a complete badass. I mean, he's a goofy character, but the guy just keeps evolving, evolving. And then whatever <laughs> Jeff Johns magic did with his character in the pages of uh, Green Lantern. Oh my gosh, that guy turned into a freaking maniac. I loved it. There's also a huge uh, confrontation here with Luther. And this features not just the trial of Superman, but it also features what the rest of the super family is doing during Clark's trial if you will. But this one here, as I mentioned, is released in America with the DC logo. This one copy right here just happens to be my copy from Titan Comics. Superman Doomsday Omnibus. That's what this is called. If you go and look it up on Amazon, that's exactly what you're going to find. It is a soft cover. It's not a hard cover. This is still when DC was kind of experimenting with this idea of an omnibus. Uh, we had just gotten the death and return of Superman omnibus in the standard size hardcover format. But this is Dan Jurgens pretty much continuing to write the story of Doomsday. This features the not just Superman Doomsday Hunter Prey, which is a freaking awesome story. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. It kind of explains where Doomsday may have come from. But it also features the Doomsday Wars 1, 2, and 3. Now, I am suggesting don't read Adventures of Superman 594 and Superman 175 in this particular omnibus. Or, <laughs> it's weird calling it an omnibus. These stories right here. We will come back to these, and actually these are collected in another collection that I'm going to be talking about here in a little bit. Uh, but this one, I remember it being really cheap. Uh, I think it was only 20 It wasn't even $30. But how in the world has this not come out in an actual omnibus format? This is the guy that killed Superman, and this is pretty much the follow-up where you get to find out exactly where Doomsday came from. And, oh man, I love the, just pretty much 
how they get rid of Doomsday. I thought that was a really cool way of doing it. But I think this is the best place to read this particular omnibus. All but those two stories that I mentioned. Superman, Lois Lane, the 25th Anniversary Deluxe Edition. So, the wedding album. The wedding of Superman and Lois Lane. I've done an actual overview of this video if you want to check that out on the channel. But this is the next place to go. Of course, something huge happens in the life of Clark Kent slash Superman. And yes, that title is a bit of a spoiler. But hey, what are you going to do? I love the extras in the back. This is the last time you see the legendary Kurt Swan draw Superman. And it's, you know, just for this, the, the big wedding issue. The honeymoon is all included in here. It's been available in trade paperback. I think I did a comparison with my first video. Uh, but this is in deluxe format, meaning that this is uh, bigger. It's taller than uh, your regular edition. I love this in the back here. Because they, I think they explain who all the guests are. Yeah, here we go. This tells you who all the guests are at the wedding. So, love that final picture. And this is the copy of the printed issue signed by everybody that worked on the book. So, again, available in deluxe edition. Or if you want to, you know, keep the trade paperbacks, there is a trade paperback of this. Alright, this is where it gets nuts. You want to get nuts? Well, anyway... Uh, because of these trade paperbacks that are like 15 to 20 years old, back then, collected editions were different. This is the Revenge Squad. It's just Superman versus the Revenge Squad. And the Revenge Squad is composed of Maxima, Barrage, Riot, Anomaly, and Misa. So, it's all of them teaming up to take down Superman. However, the mapping on this just jumps around. So, this collects like Action Comics 730... But then it also collects issue 736, where you'll see the Revenge Squad appear. So, it's like we're going to be jumping back and forth. I just read it all. Like, I remember when I had these, I just kept reading. Yeah, a couple of things were spoiled, but there was nothing you can do about that unless you want to keep jumping from book to book. Uh, but, speaking of jumping from book to book, here we have Superman Transformed. So, this is where you'll find Action Comics 729. And 732, and we're, there's some double dipping, and I'll talk a little bit about that here with the next book. Uh, you're also finding Adventure of, uh, Adventures of Superman 542 and 545, Superman 119, 122, and 123, and Man of Steel 64 and 67. There's just so much jumping around, but this is the only place you're going to find some of those issues. And it was like, hey... Let's get everybody started talking about this possible transformation of Superman. So the story with this is pretty simple. Superman is turning blue. Why? Because he's dying. So his powers are about to change because, hey, he's an alien. He's not a human being. And they die a little bit different. They don't necessarily mean death. Could just mean that his powers are about to change. The thing that sucks about this stupid collection, I remember being so mad at it, is that it ends where superman finally goes blue and i'm like wait that's it there wasn't a follow-up but then dc gave me hope with this right here superman blue volume one they even had it in the catalog of volume two and i got excited i'm like okay finally i'm gonna get to read about this era of superman uh because i hadn't read this stuff before i was you know i left comics in 1996 and i didn't come back until 2000 and what was it 2002 2003 but i was excited to read this and i know it's one of those series that a lot of people hate but i wanted to judge it for myself because there's a lot of series people hate that i end up loving and vice versa there's a lot of series that i recommend to people and they're like how would you recommend me this trash but anyway i was excited for now now we were going to finally get superman blue turn this is how he went blue lightning blue and then we're going to see him turn lightning red because yes i've read his stories and other comics but no the catalog took out superman blue volume two and it was i mean they don't really officially cancel books because it was never solicited but it was just gone so I never really did get to find how he split into two different people. Uh, I think there were supposed to be two or three volumes of this particular era. Um, but this one's still really easy to find. Who knows? I mean, anything's possible with DC. They may release a Superman Blue Volume 2. I don't know. Out of nowhere. I did get excited when I saw the comic book or the solicitation and then... Uh, in the catalog for Superman Blue and Red. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the actual follow. No, it's the new miniseries. I think it was a, and it's got a lot of rave reviews. I just, 
I was expecting, uh, you know, this type of blue and red. Now we jump into a new era for Superman. In comes Jeff Loeb, Ed McGinnis, Mike McCone, just to name a few of the creators. And we have these collections, The City of Tomorrow, replacing those old uh, tree paperbacks, which I still have some because we, we haven't gotten a volume three yet. But I did want to uh, talk about this next. This is pretty much going back and touching what really is Metropolis, who makes up Metropolis, and why their protector is one of the greatest superheroes of all time. Now, there's a lot of team-ups in this because Jeff Loeb just loves adding characters from the DC Universe. And not just him, you know, he's not alone in this, but... Oh, this... <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, I have to talk about this. This issue right here... I know that it's, it's, it's a serious issue, right? Like, Superman and Wonder Woman go on this mission. They are lost in this different dimension where time just goes by a little bit different. It's, it's a lot faster, so it's like they grow old together. And sure, I believe Superman is the most purest, like whatever they were trying to do with this book. Purest soul, the, the, the perfect superhero. But when he turned Wonder Woman down, I was like, come on, dude. Like, you're in a different area code and uh, like that's a different dimension. Does that even count? You've been together with Wonder Woman for years. Anyway, I, I, I was like, I can believe everything else in this book. But turning down that Wonder Booty, I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know. If, I, Superman's a better man than I am. Don't tell the Astonishing Melanie. I'm talking about a fictional character. Where the hell am I with this? Okay, let's go with Volume 2. So here's Volume 2 of City of Tomorrow. We haven't had a Volume 3 uh, in the catalog or solicited, but these are great collections. They're big and thick collections. They're cheap. They're like 30 bucks. I don't know if they still be cheap here in today's uh, prices, but this is Superman getting out of Metropolis, returning to uh, Smallville. I almost forgot where he was from. Sorry, I got so distracted by that Wonder Woman rant I went on. I don't know why I decided to go on. Never know what you're gonna get on near mint condition. You're supposed to be learning about where to read Superman and I'm talking about how I refuse to believe Superman turned down Wonder Woman. Um, but anyway, this, yes, uh, Superman goes back to Smallville. By now you have people, not just Jeff Lowe, but you have Joe Kelly, J.M. DeMatteis writing a lot of this stuff, and of course, uh, and again, it's just, I love his Superman. His Superman just, to me, is perfect. Like, I love the big chins that he's always drawn. And I think he has probably one of the best Superman out there, like, uh, to draw the character of Superman. Doug Mankey comes in and does a lot of the art in here. This particular story starts building Lex Luthor for his next takeover. Um, and, oh yeah, this is also where Lois Lane goes missing. And it ends on a pretty big cliffhanger, which, like I said, there's no volume three yet, but we do have these old trade paperbacks here. This is what I've replaced my volumes one, two, and three with. Uh, this is Critical Condition. And like I said, Lois is missing. On top of that, Superman is sick. And all these villains are just coming out of nowhere to try to take him down. Uh, like the Toy Man comes in in this particular volume. Um, so, <laughs> like, Superman has to try to get Clark, or, sorry, Bruce to help him out. Lex Luthor starts sending a bunch of head henchwomen his way. And that, actually, this issue right here with Superman is pretty damn awesome. That kind of really sums up their relationship together. But, this, do they find a cure for Superman? Well, maybe. And then, who ends up curing him? We gotta interrupt that, because we gotta talk about Emperor Joker. I really like this story, and hardly anyone ever talks about this. Love the covers by McGinnis here. This is pretty much when Batman's greatest nemesis, the Joker, reshapes reality. How? Well, you can find out by reading it, and becomes the world's greatest, most dangerous criminal. And Bizarro is the world's greatest hero. And then it's just... <laughs> nuts after that like i said it's one of the most underrated gems to me this is before batman superman and probably what really got jeff Loeb to try to bring back that title of world's finest with the superman batman comic that he got to write and kick off actually with uh ed mcginnis and then of course later on michael turner but 
There's some Mike Miller artwork. And again, a title that I hardly Doug Mankey's early work, man, I, or at least for me, this. And then, of course, when he went over to Justice League, uh, when he was uh, Joe Kelly was writing that run. But I don't hear enough people talk about Emperor Joker. I really enjoyed this more so than like a lot of the bigger events that were going on or that have been collected in deluxe hardcovers or omnibus formats. I was hoping one day they would do it, but at least we got a trade paperback of it. There's nothing I can do about the title, but Superman, President Lex. So if there is a volume three of the City of Tomorrow, it will include this. There probably will be enough for four volumes, Emperor Joker, Critical uh, Condition, and Return to Krypton. Because I don't think they would do the Our Worlds at War in that particular format. Uh, this, these are a series of just old trade paperbacks here. So this story pretty much is Lex Luthor, you know, helping rebuild Gotham. And this is, of course, during the time of No Man's Land, after the big earthquake and cataclysm. And he's helping to rebuild Gotham. Now, he's taking this opportunity to antagonize Superman. And he's just accumulating more and more power. Hey, Young Justice, I love those characters. So glad Volume 6, the final volume, got put into the catalog. And hopefully it will be solicited. Uh, but what I was going to say is he ends up running for president and, of course, becomes president. So long before Marvel did their dark reign with Norman Osborn becoming uh, the head of Hammer, you know, taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. and all that, you know, President Luther was around. I thought that was cool, and he stayed president for a long time. Again, you have Ed McGinnis on artwork uh, for most of the stuff in here, and he's joined by Doug Mankey, Paco Medina, just to name a few. Uh, Mike Wieringo also doing some of the art in here. You know I love sneaking books in, but this is where I suggest reading one book from here. And that is What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way. That is found in Action Comics 775. I've talked about it in my Where to Start Reading Superman. I think it's a phenomenal story that best introduces you know, what sum Superman symbolizes and why he symbolizes it. And again, this is uh, Joe Kelly and Doug Mankey working together. This has also been uh, part of of these, where is it, the Superman, like, best of stories, I think. It's also been collected in there. Uh, it hasn't been collected in an actual Superman in chronological order, like a trade paperback, but you can find it here or in that, I think it's best of Superman. It's a freaking awesome story if you've not read it. All right, Return to Krypton. This is another one that's a mess. Uh, just looking at the mapping, which I'm going to put somewhere around the video here, but if you look at the mapping, it's a mess. I mean... Just how it's collected. Like, how are you going to have Superman 166 to 167 and then 184? Like, you're skipping a huge chunk of stories. Uh, but the main part of this, though, the main focus of this is that Superman meets his biological father. And they have this whole father-son bonding moment. And it's weird because they're the same age. And how this all happens, and is it really his father well one way you can find out so my only thing i will say about this is do not read superman 184 adventures of superman 606 or man of steel 128 or action comics 793 because you want to read this first this is superman our worlds at war this is the big thick trade paperback there's also two smaller trades that are um, a lot older than this but this one collects more than those trades, I will say that. Um, so this is a huge attack on Earth is coming. And it's the character known as the Imperirex. Imperiex, I think that's how you pronounce it. And all the characters, not just Superman, I mean everybody, all the Justice League, Young Justice, they all have to fight against this oncoming doom. They all have to team up with characters like Luthor and um, Darkseid. Luthor, siphoning my inner hackman. But anyway, uh, this has a lot of deaths and it changes a lot of the status quo for some of the characters. A lot of the things that happen here affect the pages of Justice League, affect the pages of Wonder Woman. There's a couple of weird things that happen here that I have to ask myself, did that, did that character really die? Did the character die off screen? And I'm serious, there's a lot of deaths here. Now, of course, some of those deaths have been undone since this. Uh, but at the time, it was huge. 
This is also where you will see Superman. There is a book I haven't talked about because it's an alternate reality, but everybody should read it because it's Kingdom Come. And if you're familiar with Kingdom Come, you know the emblem is changed, right? This is where Superman decides to change the emblem on his chest to look like that Superman from Kingdom Come. And it's in order to honor the fallen soldiers of our worlds at war. So this is the way that I'd suggest to collect it uh, because like I said, the two trade paperbacks just, uh, they don't collect everything. This has more of the comics in it. Now, you can go back and return to Krypton and read the issues that I said to not read because those take place after our worlds at war. But that's part two. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing any of these books that are still in stock, check out our sponsors, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comics shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code near min condition all one word at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. And that was the comprehensive reading order of Superman in Collected Editions Part 2. Man, we've got a lot to still get collected. So, look forward to Part 3. That should be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Now that i found everything and I'm ready to get back to it. Uh, but anyway, don't forget to smash the like button. Again, uh, join our Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel and you have things like access to videos early or getting them uh, to vote on what the next reading order should be. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all again for being patient, uh, for watching, for suggesting more reading orders. Uh, yeah, everyone, thank you all so much. Seriously, thank you to our patrons, not uh, just the ones that are credited at the end of this episode, but also every single Patreon we have, whether they're new, uh, that just joined uh, today, or have been with us since the beginning. And every one of you that are watching, thank you all. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Up, up, and away. <laughs>